بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته This is Riyadh Razazi will come you to the new series Walking with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talking about the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but a seerah not like any seerah this is a special program about this man uh, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, our prophet as a as a man as a as a husband as a leader as a as a father as a son alayhi salatu wassalam uh, last week we were talking about the uh, physical attributes of the prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam the physical attributes of the prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam huwa bashar walakin laysa kasair al-bashar a human being but not like any human being sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we wanted to start the series by you know uh, talking about the merits of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking about you know uh, um, him as a man as a rasul all the all the huquq you know the huquq of the prophet talking about his intercessions sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then we also talked about you know you know giving his description so that if you were to see him, insha'Allah ta'ala, you would recognize him as Rasulullah, you know, who says, whoever sees me in a dream, he has truly seen me. So hopefully, maybe, you know, after we describe him to you and talking about him, you shall, you know, learn to love this man who sacrificed so much for this ummah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hopefully, hopefully, you can see him, insha'Allah ta'ala, if not in this life, but in the hereafter, insha'Allah ta'ala, in Jannah to al firdaus when uh, when the Sahabi who came crying to Rasulullah saying, Ya Rasulullah, uh, I, I, he, he went crying, missing the Prophet ﷺ, you know, but then he came to see him. He says, Ya Rasulullah, you know, if I miss you, I come to see you. But in Jannah, I'm thinking in Jannah, if I were to miss you in Jannah, how would I be able to see you? How would I be able to see you? Because most, you know, definitely Prophet Muhammad will be in the... Uh, in a higher level than all of us, alayhi salatu wassalam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا This is in Surah An-Nisa. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whosoever obeys Allah and his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those will be resurrected amongst al-nabi'een wa siddiqeen. They will be resurrected with the prophets and the truthful uh, and, and the martyrs and the salihin and the righteous. And that is the great companionship. What a great companionship to be amongst the prophet, to be amongst all the prophets, to be amongst the, the truthful, to be amongst the salihin, the righteous in Jannah. Imagine Prophet Muhammad on your right, uh, Prophet uh, Ibrahim on your left, then you see Musa, you see Isa, you see Adam, you see Nuh, uh, you see all these amazing prophets, you get to see Abu Bakr and you get to see Umar, you get to see the sisters, they get to see Maryam, and you get to see Fatima and Khadija, right? You get to see uh, the wife of Imran, Al-Imran, Allahu Akbar, all these w uh, great women. You know, and great man, insha'Allah ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, talking about the Prophet, let me uh, carry on the description of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kana azhar al Kana azhar al He, uh, he, uh, he's, um, yani, when we talk about uh, the color, yani, of the Prophet Muhammad, it's a reddish complexion. It's a reddish complexion. Azhar al yani, it's, it's, uh, he was not white, he was not dark, but he has a reddish complexion, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His head was moder moder moderately large, not small, not big, but moderate, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his face was round and brighter than the moon, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yani, uh, ila sumra musharrab. So, as I was talking about his complexion, his complexion, <laughs> his complexion is a uh, reddish complexion and then we talked about يعني, uh, 
um, the face is round alayhi salatu was salam idha abtasama an-nur yakhruju min wajhihi Allahu akbar idha abtasama sallallahu alayhi wasallam an-nur yakhruju min wajhihi when he smiles nur comes out from his face sallallahu alayhi wasallam Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad aswad al-aynayn his eyes were 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 black eyes so he did not have you know uh, uh, he did not have uh, uh, yani, uh, green eyes or blue eyes or you know his eyes were large sallallahu alaihi wasallam and 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 black big big black eyes with big eyelashes sallallahu alaihi wasallam aqran fi ghayri qarn aqran fi ghayri qarn meaning that his uh, his eyebrows they were they were um kind of like in an arc arc shaped and they look like they're attached but they're not attached with each other you know it looks like they are but they are not and they are like an arc shaped um eyebrows sallallahu alaihi and um he was very smooth in his face although he will talk about his beard but uh, other than the beard the the cheek was smooth sallallahu alaihi you know there's some people <laughs> they have hair everywhere <laughs> they have hair growing here growing everywhere you know like the whole hair you know but prophet muhammad when we talk about his beard he's only in the beard side but in the cheek the cheek was smooth sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know you know some people they have hair growing everywhere <laughs> but prophet muhammad as a salam his his cheek was uh, was smooth alayhi salatu wasallam has his eyes were anointed with kuhl, right? Yet they're not. You know, you look at his eyes as if they have kuhl, but they don't have kuhl. Alayhi salatu was salam. And, and, and um, you know, in his, uh, uh, when he gets angry, there is a vein that comes out from his, uh, from his forehead, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When he gets angry, alaq. Uh, Hina, يعني, uh, a little vein that comes out from his uh, forehead. Sallallahu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi Muhammad. Um, his nose were upright, or he was upright, you know, in the middle. كدا, uh, upright in the middle. So it's not long, not short, but upright in the middle. And his lips was were filled. They were filled lips. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يعني, uh, they were not filled like with uh, you know uh, what you know we were talking about this last week and we were laughing you know uh, and uh, some people they use Botox La Prophet Muhammad had mashallah you know uh, naturally filled lips alayhi salatu um, his hair uh, was straight not curly straight and sometimes he would braid his hair alayhi salatu wasalam. sometimes he would braid his hair uh, he sweats a lot. He used to sweat a lot, and 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 his sweat is like Subhanallah, look, look. It's like you know, it's like gems coming from him. And he very and it smells beautiful. Smells like atal. His sweat smells like atal. Araquhu, you know, smells like atal. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alayhi wa um, uh, And then talking about. Uh, uh, his beard, he used to have a large, thick beard. He used to have a large, thick beard. How thick? It's been uh, narrated that when he, when he leads the salah, you can see from his back, and you know, if you were, if you were, you know, behind the Prophet, you will see his uh, side beard moving. Kida, moving, right? So when he's talking, this, this side here, where his beard is, you know, you see it moving. So he had a thick, uh, large thick beard and in his beard والسلام, he had 70 gray hair 17 one seven not 70 17 gray hair والسلام, especially in the anfaqa in the anfaqa where كثير شعر اللحية 17 شعر بيضاء في العنفقة what is the عنفقة عنفقة is right here this is what we call in Arabic Al-Anfaqa, this side here, right? This video that you have here, right? Here. In Arabic, it's called Al-Anfaqa. The Prophet Muhammad, the Sahaba, they counted 
they counted 17 gray hair in here in here alayhi salatu wassalam sallallahu alayhi wasallam sallallahu alayhi wasallam he had broad shoulders his shoulders were broad sallallahu alayhi wasallam very broad yani kida and uh very and his chest was wide as well so he had a wide chest right and and broad uh, uh, shoulders, Ali Salatu Salam. So he wasn't skinny, he wasn't fat, moderate, Ali Salatu Salam. Hmm? And and uh, and uh, mashallah, well built, because you know, uh, wide chest, as if he's a wrestler, but he wasn't. Although he wrestled the the strongest wrestler at the time, and he beat him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wide chest flat stomach he had a flat stomach right he didn't have a a a, a, a one pack <laughs> no he flat stomach sallallahu alayhi wasallam alayhi salatu wasallam and which means he wasn't fat i just mean he wasn't overweight right uh uh and 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 also uh alayhi salatu wasallam his back was flat yeah and his back was flat alayhi salatu wassalam and also in his uh, in his flat back he had some what it's called the seal of prophethood on the left shoulder on the left shoulder he had khatam al nubuwa khatam al nubuwa the seal of prophethood which is around like a round kind of uh, thingy you know piece of skin in 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 his back that's got you know some hair coming off of it right hair coming off of it so that's called the seal of the prophets khatim al nubuwa so all the prophets they used to have that seal of al nubuwa the seal yani the khatim al nubuwa he had it in his left shoulder sallallahu alayhi wasallam and also his hair as i mentioned his hair was long and it used to come down to his shoulder and sometimes sometimes up to his ears and sometimes he would go and he would shave it وسلم, so he had long hair sometimes it will reach his shoulders and sometimes it will reach his ears but behind his ears right behind the ears and then sometimes he would shave shave off his uh, his hair عليه الصلاة والسلام. and uh, he had رقبة طويلة يعني his uh, neck was was long mashallah this is all these are uh, uh, traits of a of a an handsome man, of a of a good looking man, of a very very handsome man. You know all these traits I'm talking about. You know the eyes and and the the lips and the cheek and the chest and the the shoulders and the back and the and the the the, the back was flat and you know all these are sign of the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. You know, raqaba, so the neck was long, you know, short, like, uh, it was a, you know, long neck, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? Um, talking about, more about Prophet Muhammad, alayhi wa sallam, um, he had very soft hair that grew from his chest. Yani, it's not like a very hairy chest. Very smooth hair that grew from the chest to his navel. Right? Navel, I'm sorry, navel. Navel. To his navel. So it's like, it's like, you know, from the navel up to his chest. That's what he had, you know, his hair. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And very smooth, very smooth hair. Yani, it's not like, you know, hair everywhere, hair, 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 la. Very smooth from his chest down to his navel, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No hair in his belly. No hair in his belly. But just the chest, you know, uh, and, the, and the chest and the belly, they were, they were leveled, right? The chest and the belly, they were leveled because, like I mentioned, the flat belly. So it was leveled. And, and uh, so the hair was just like very very smooth hair from his chest and then and then down to his uh uh, uh navel uh alayhi salatu wasalam he had uh long arms 
long arms and legs. Ya salam. Long arms and legs as well. And he used to have big hands. His hands were big. Sallallahu alayhi wa <laughs> His hands were big. Alayhi uh, salam. But they were soft. Soft. Softer than silk. His hands were soft. Softer than silk. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he had, you know, his foot was like flatted foot. And when he walks, he would walk fast. Alayhi salatu salam. Ida masha asla. Right? Ida masha asla. So when he walks, he used to walk fast. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is with regard to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi wa sallam in a nutshell describing him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Um, and after finishing his description, I want to talk about quickly why do we need to study the seerah? What are the lessons that derive from the seerah? And then we will talk about the world, you know, before the coming of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just so you can see the, you know, what he had to deal with sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let us talk about, you know, why do we study the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad alaihi wasallam? But first and foremost, brothers and sisters, those on Facebook and those on Instagram, كيف حالكم? How are you doing today? How's everybody doing? Inshallah Ta'ala. I hope you guys are doing okay. I hope you guys are keeping safe. I hope everybody's uh, uh, staying healthy. Inshallah Ta'ala. Uh, despite all that is going around, you know, with the uh, with this pandemic and it's getting worse and worse. But I hope you people like now, yeah, we'll, we're living with it. But at the same time, we're, you know, be, we're, we're very um, vigilant. Uh, and careful, uh, whatever we are, I hope inshallah ta'ala that you keep in, you know, your, your, your social distancing and, and you're keeping your masks on and all the uh, precautions that you're taking. Of course, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but still we have to be really vigilant inshallah. Alrighty. So brothers and sisters, we study the seerah. Why? It's called the seerah, just so you know, seerah. You know, seerah. One second. The seerah, it's على تسير على خطا صاحبها. A seerah. A seerah. It's called seerah because in Arabic seerah comes like walking. Seer. This is why we call the series walking with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Walking with the Prophet Muhammad alayhi wasallam. So seerah, so, seer. تسير. You walk. We walk upon the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam. We learn many lessons, lessons in uh, giving, lessons in in uh, in 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 uh, uh, in, uh, in sacrifice, uh, lessons in in hope and to never despair of of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Lessons in sincerity, lessons in 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 uh, uh, in. Um, um, uh, planning because we will see how Prophet Muhammad as he was a, a leader and the best of planners as well you know he used to plan uh, le uh, lessons in, in, uh, in management administration lessons in, in dealing with, with people dealing with, with one another lessons in you know the art of dealing the art of convincing the art of influencing people as well Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the art the talking about lessons in 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 the in how can we keep families together lessons in keeping families together as well uh inshallah ta'ala so please uh brother uh, naim banat has just shared with us uh the youtube um uh, channel my youtube channel please subscribe to that youtube channel right it's on facebook you know uh, subscribe to my youtube channel youtube.com uh, Riyad uh, R Warzazi, R Warzazi, right? So you can just, you know, go to YouTube and type in, you know, Riyad Warzazi. Inshallah, you'd see my YouTube channel and then you can subscribe to it. There are all the series, all the lessons. You will find them there and much, much more, inshallah. Ta'ala. Okay, we study the Sila, brothers and sisters, because it is, um, um, you see, uh, we're talking about a renaissance, the greatest renaissance in history. Why, why am I saying the greatest renaissance in history? Because you will see this man 
who was born in the desert, right? Uh, he had no brothers, no sisters. Um, his his parents died, uh, in you know, in when in 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 a very young age, um, and and um, and uh, and he was ummi illiterate. Ali his salatu was salam. Uh, the, you know, he had to deal with jahiliya. You know, people in the t in 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 jahiliya, and and and. Uh, and you will see how these people were and why we call them jahiliya, you know, jahil. And yani white is called really jahiliya. And how the Prophet ﷺ had to change that, you know, that not only that region, but subhanAllah the region and and and, uh, and the rest of the world because of the rahmah uh, uh, that he brought in, alayhi salatu wassalam. Um, when we talk about, you know, uh, role models, the, the greatest role model of all time, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam, yes, when we we finished the series talking about prophets, right? We finished the series talking about prophets. It was an amazing series. But you know, you cannot when when you see, for instance, if I were to tell you an example as uh, Isa, can you take your Isa as role model? Isa, you can take him as a role model. You know, he was a poor man. Yes, you know, poor man. The poor people can take him as a role model. He was a uh, 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 shab sabir. You know, he was a young uh, man. Uh, patient, persevered, you know, yeah, so you could use him, but he was not a husband, you know, Ali Sato Salam. He he wasn't a father. Uh, you could, uh, for instance, uh, I'll give you another example. Suleiman Ali Salam. Suleiman, uh, uh, he was uh, Adil, he, you know, he was Malik, Hakim, a ruler. He was just ruler. Uh, he was uh, very, uh, Allah Azza wa has given him a great kingdom, right? A great dominion. So, uh, but but you cannot use him as an example of uh, of faqir. The prophet was faqir at the same time. He was ghani, but he was also faqir. Ali his salat was salam. You know. So so. But prophet Muhammad, he you 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 could use him as role model from every aspect, from every every aspect. Right. You know. You could look at all the prophets, but prophet Muhammad. Any aspect you will find, you know, if you can, you can, you, you can use that aspect to uh, mimic him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because he he went through all the circumstances and all situations, Ali salatu wasallam. Hakim, mahkum, he ruled, but before that he was uh, he he was ruled as well, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was daif, he was weak, and then he was qawi as well. You know, he was strong when you know when when he was forming. And, and 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 building the the ummah ali sattu salam muahid musalim how he treated the, the arabs and dealt with the arabs how he dealt with the ajam non arabs how he dealt with the jews how he dealt with the muslims how he dealt with the the poor how he dealt with the the rich uh, if you are rich you can use him as a role model if you are poor you could use him as a role model ali sattu salam you're a ruler, you could use him as a role model. You're a leader, you could use him as a role model. Father, husband, you choose it. You name it, you can find him as an example. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. If you are Qadi, you could also use him as, a, as, a, as an example. Qadi, as a judge, you could use him uh, as, a, as, a, as an example. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest... Uh, the greatest uh, personality in, in, in the whole world, Ali Sato Sam. We are talking about Shakespeare, but Shakespeare in writing, right? Shakespeare in writing, Napoleon, Napoleon in in in, in, harb, in, in war. Uh, you know, maybe you could, you know, we were talking about Napoleon, the 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 uh, the, uh, the 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 master, the the how brilliant he was in 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 uh, uh, administrating, you know, and, and and you know a war and a battle and whatnot. Talking about uh, Gandhi in in siyasa in politics. Uh, talking about Voltaire, you know, the French Voltaire in 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 in, in intellectual intellectuality. Talking about, like I said, Shakespeare in in terms of writing. But but Prophet Muhammad Ali Sallam, he like a, a compre comprehensive man. Ali his salatu salam. Uh, he he he. Um, uh, you can relate to him in every way. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A husband, a leader, a father. Insan, a human being, a human being, just a regular person. You could use him as any you know anybody could use him really as an example as a role model. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
in his akhlaq in his akhlaq if he was to get angry how he gets angry um has he ever hit anyone alayhi salam has he ever you know spoke any spoken any foul language alayhi salam has he ever used any foul language any any unnecessary language alayhi salam um how did he uh, his patience his uh, uh naam, his patience his dua his salah his uh, has he ever lied has he ever deceived has he ever lied to even the, his enemies ha, has he ever deceived his enemies sallallahu alaihi wasallam has he uh, ever um uh, cheated ali sallallahu alaihi whether muslims or not muslims no he has never done so ali so adim shakhsiyah a great personality a great great personality sallallahu alayhi wasallam so brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala let's look at the world before the coming of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam okay the world before the coming of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so um after the death of isa alayhi salam so the world was split into two main powers all right i hope you're taking notes you guys those of you on facebook those of you on instagram i hope you're taking notes worldwide there were two main powers there were two main powers there was that casteism social system tabaqat you know like tabaqat levels the social system being used at the time is the system of casteism yani tabaqat and the two main powers like you may say today you know russia and usa you know the americans and the russians maybe the two superpowers all right at the time you had the romans and the persians all right the romans and the persians were the two most superpowers of the time uh the christians after the death of isa alayhi salam 500 years later after the death of isa alayhi salam um the christians also split into three groups right this happened 500 years after the death of isa because when isa was there right people were still following the religion of tawhid of the oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were still worshiping allah they were not worshiping people they were uh, they were worshiping allah they were not worshiping isa they were worshiping allah but then 500 years later even the Christians themselves, of course, they deviated and they got split into three, three groups. The first group, they, um, it's the group that believe that Isa alayhi salam is, is God. The first group believed that Isa alayhi salam or deemed Isa to be God. The second group, they believed that Isa was son of God. And the third group is the group that believed in Trinity. In Trinity. So with regard to the first group, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, says in the Quran, talking about you know, the first group. The first group, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, with regard to those who believe that Isa was, uh, 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 was uh, God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 17. Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 17. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمِ لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمِ They have committed kufr. Those who claim that Isa is, that Allah is Isa. Right? They have committed kufr. Who? Those who claim that Allah is Isa ibn Maryam. So the first group is the group who believe that Isa is God. The second group that believe that Isa is son of God, this is mentioned in Surah Maryam, Surah Maryam, verse number 88. Surah Maryam, verse number 88. The first group is Surah Al-Ma'idah, what verse number, brothers and sisters, just to see if you guys are taking notes. Those who claim that uh, Allah is uh, Isa, or that Isa is Allah. What verse and what chapter? What verse and what chapter? Yes, Sister Yashmin, this is uh, verse number 17, and what chapter? 
What chapter? Layla A7. <laughs> 17. You just. Al Ma'ida. Right. Al Ma'ida. All right. Surah Al Ma'ida. And then group number two is Surah Maryam, verse number 88. لقد جئتم شيئا إدا تكاد السماوات تكاد السما تكاد السماوات يتفطرن من وتنشق الأرض وتخض الجبال هدا أن دعوا للرحمن ولدا أن دعوا للرحمن ولدا. They saying, they saying as Allah سبحانه وتعالى says وقالوا تخذ الرحمن ولدا. And they claim that Ar-Rahman, yani Allah, has begotten a son. And they claim that Allah has begotten a son. This is the third group, second group who believe that Allah, that Isa is the son of God. وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدًا And they claim that Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, Ar-Rahman, the most compassionate, uh, has begotten a son. And the third group, my brothers and sisters, those who believe in Trinity, those who believe in Trinity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 73. Al-Ma'idah, verse number 73. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثًا لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثًا They have committed kufr. Indeed, they have committed kufr. Those who claim in Allah, that Allah is Trinity, Thalithu Thalatha, is three is Trinity, meaning you know the uh, the God, the Father, and the Spirit, or the Holy Host, or the no the Holy Ghost, Holy Host, whatever. The 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 um, uh, God, the Father. Ah, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. Thalithu Thalatha. So they. And it may for them it makes sense, but it makes no sense. Even for them it makes no sense, but you know, three in one and one in three. Three in one and one in three. Yeah, uh, uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. These are three in one. I have no idea, but this is what they believe. Uh, and uh, and does it make sense to them? Even for them, it does not make sense, but they just believe in it as is what they do. So these are the three groups. That split after the uh, after the uh, after the the death of Isa alayhi salam. With regard to the Arabs, my brothers and sisters, I'm giving you the you know how how was the world before the coming of the Prophet Muhammad. Talking about the Christians, talk about the Jews, and also the the Arabs. With regard to the um, um, the the Jews. With regard to the Jews, the Jews, my brothers and sisters, also they deviated. Uh, a lot of them, um, uh, accused Allah of names. A lot of them accused uh, not only Allah of names, they also accused the prophets of names. They cursed uh, Yaqub, they cursed Ibrahim. They some uh, they they cursed many prophets with Eidu Billah. So also a lot of you know of the Ben Israel they also deviated with Eidu Billah. With regard to the Arabs, with regard to the Arabs, let's talk about the um, the the in 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 Yemen. In Yemen, what was happening in Yemen? There is this qawm called Saba. There is this nation called Saba. Listen up. This is really interesting. Because this will lead to, you know, what something's getting, you know, to the birth of the Prophet Muhammad Ali uh, These people, Allah Azza wa mentions them, the people of Saba. They were very, very, you know, in Yemen, they were very strong. Uh, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with so many blessings. In terms of fruits and vegetables and you know all the goods, subhanallah. So much so that they had you know uh, you know lands 
uh, and fields that where where vegetables grow and where where uh, fruits grow. If a woman was to cross with her basket, imagine if a woman was to cross with her basket from the beginning of a field to the end of the field without cutting or without picking any fruits by the end or by the time she crosses out the field, her basket will be filled with fruits. The fruits, subhanAllah, they used to fall just by themselves from trees. Allah has blessed them with so much. Khair kathir, so much good, so much khair. But they disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They disbelieved in Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لِسَبَئِنْ فِي مَسْكَنِهِمْ آيَةً جَنَّتَانِ عَيْنْ يَمِينٍ وَشِمَالٍ جَنَّتَان Allah calls it Jannatan. This is the gardens, garden on from the right and gardens from the left. What happened, my brothers and sisters? Because these people were, were you know, ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not believe in Allah. In fact, they were spreading mischief. So what happened, brothers and sisters, um, they had this dam. There was this dam that was uh, helping with the water flow and whatnot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just subhanallah sent upon them fi'ran mice a mice that were destroying that dam slowly 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 they were destroying the dam and then the dam subhanallah got destroyed and then the water overflowed and all the gardens that they were having they were you know all the gardens subhanallah were destroyed they did not, people, they were not ungrateful. They were ungrateful to Allah. They were not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had so much good. But because they did not thank Allah and they did not believe in Allah, Allah sent a small animal, mice, destroyed that dam, which in fact caused you know flood to happen and the fields and all that good were destroyed. So this happened in Yemen. Brothers and sisters, why am I saying this? This story happened 120 years before the birth of the Prophet Muhammad. This happened 120 years before the birth of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, what happened to the Arabs? The Arabs, by the way, just so you know, the Arabs from the, this is in Yemen, but in the Arab Peninsula, in the Arab Peninsula, the origin of the Arabs are from Qahtan. Uh, you know, it's a tribe called Qahtan. This is what they call Arab Qahtaniyin, right? So the uh, the origin of the Arabs. So what happened was the the story of Ibrahim. We mentioned, we talked about during the story, you know, the stories of the prophets when we mentioned Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, with his wife Hajar and his son Ismail when he left them in the valley, right, in the uh, in the desert. You know, we remember that story. So um, uh, uh, Ismail alayhi salam he married a woman from you know Jurhum. Julhum, they came from Yemen. After that dam, as I mentioned earlier, when the dam got destroyed, when the dam was destroyed, those people left Yemen. They left Yemen looking for a place to live. So this Qabila Julhum, they moved into, you know, uh, Arab Peninsula. And then Ismail, alayhi salam, he married a woman from, you know, as he was growing up, he married a woman from Julhum, Julhumiyya, right? From the son of Qahtan. The origins are Qahtan. Yani you may say that the origins of the Arabs are from Yemen. You may say that the origins of the Arabs come from Yemen. So the Arabs, they lived in Tawheed for centuries. They followed Tawheed, the religion of Ibrahim, for centuries. Until a man by the name of Amr ibn Luhay. Listen up. A man by the name of Amr ibn Luhay. I want you to remember this name. He will do something. This man, Amr ibn al-Hay, he used to be a businessman, a trader. He would travel for trade. So he traveled to Asham, Syria, what's called today Syria, for trade. And then he saw something. What did he see? And what did he do? He came back. 
he changed the religion of the Arabs into what? How was the status of women, by the way? The status of women in in the Romans and the Persians or the Romans, women had no status, just so you know. Women, they had the lowest of all ranks. In fact, they had research that is a woman, you know, the Romans, is a woman, is she a human being or is she a devil? This is, you know, the, the uh, they call it that era, the era of the, the Romans at the time. They used to believe that woman, they, she was not a human. She was, a, you know, a, something, jinni, the devil. Yeah, I mean, the lowest of all um, uh, of civilization, the lowest of all mankind, they, you know, was, was women regarded in that regard. So how was women regarded, you know, before the coming of the Prophet Muhammad? How many types of nikahs they used to have? In the in the, what is called jahiliya, how many types of nikah they used to have? Women, how many types of nikah? What happened to Al Yemen? What happened to that man Amr ibn Luhay when he came back from Syria to Mecca? Right? What happened? What would he introduce? What would the Arabs do? And when would the Prophet be born? Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We will talk about this. Tomorrow, insha'Allah. Tomorrow, we will talk about this, insha'Allah ta'ala. Some of you may have smelt it. Some of you may have smelt my cliffhanger coming. So it's definitely one cliffhanger, right? And I will not answer these questions. These questions will be answered tomorrow, insha'Allah ta'ala, when we talk more about Prophet Muhammad alayhi before the birth of the Prophet we're paving the road now what are we doing? we're paving the road for the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alright we're going to talk more because it's very important it's very important that you and I understand history before the coming of the Rasulullah alayhi wa it's very important history my brothers and sisters really you know when people they say history repeats itself history you know it's really we have to study history things that ha happening today in America things happening today in this whole world if you study history you would understand you would understand why things are happening the way they're happening today you want to repeat let me repeat if you were to study history you would understand why things are happening today the way they're happening so it's very important that we study history and this is why I'm talking about history before the coming of the Prophet Muhammad and before the birth of the Prophet Muhammad. So tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be, you know, talking more about the history before the coming of the Prophet, you know, and then we'll talk about the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qamarun, 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 Sidna al-Nabi, Qamarun, wa jamil, wa jamil, wa jamil, Sidna al-Nabi, wa jamil. صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and let me tell you something from Morocco أنا مني في ياش أشعل يا مني نخلق من رزقي لاش والخانق يرزقني أنا مني في ياش أشعل يا مني نخلق من رزقي لاش والخانق يرزقني اللهم صل على المصطفى حبيبنا محمد عليه السلام اللهم صل على المصطفى حبيبنا محمد عليه السلام صلوا على النبي send your salutations about prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد my brothers and sisters, I shall see you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Those of you who've come in late, please go back and watch the series. It is all the sessions are recorded on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube.
go to my YouTube channel and watch all these sessions and other and previous uh, sessions as well, inshallah ta'ala. Azakum Allah khair, my brothers and sisters. We'll see you tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 p.m. UK Time. Azakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Barakallahu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.